Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Nature's Classroom, Harnessing the Power of the Outdoors to Teach Science. My name is Corey, and I'm really excited uh, that you've decided to join this webinar today. I'm hoping that you've joined to look for some ways to maybe get your students outside a little bit more um, while still being able to teach the science content that you need to teach, um, and maybe finding some innovative new ways to uh, complete that task. So before we get into things, just a couple of housekeeping uh, items we wanna talk about. Uh, there will be a recording of this uh, webinar uh, after we're done. So if I go too fast or you miss something, um, you are certainly able to view it at a later date. Um, and then there's also a resource guide, a hyperdoc, uh, that is going to be posted in the chat. Um, and this has everything that I'm gonna cover today, has a few things that I'm not gonna be able to get to. Um, and so hopefully there's things in that that you can refer to after the webinar that can also help you with your students. Um, and then we're also joined by Robin. Uh, Robin, you want to say hello to everyone? Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming today. So Robin will be kind of behind the scenes. So if there's any problems, uh, you can post those in the chat. Um, she'll be able to view those um, and take care, hopefully take care of those. All right. So uh, also I wanna mention our sponsor for this uh, webinar is Science on the Grant. So we are putting, we put on a STEAM-based conference for educators like yourselves every summer um, for grades K through eight. And this year it is July 15th and 16th. And really we are, we put this together to try to celebrate you. Um, we know all the hard work that it uh, takes to be a teacher and what it, what goes into it. And so we're hoping that people, uh, that you'll join us for this summer conference to really gain a little bit more, um, you know, professional development for yourself, but also to celebrate you. That's really a big thing that we want to do there. And so um, for, you know, thanking you for joining this webinar today, um, you can register for our conference at vaei.org. And if you use the code thank you uh, you will save 20% on your registration fees. All right, so we're going to start off here with just kind of seeing who, uh, doing a quick check-in on who's with us today. Um, so I'm curious of what grade of students uh, you teach currently. So uh, Robin's going to launch a poll here for you that should pop up soon. And um, just wondering who's with us today uh, as we uh, get ready for this uh, webinar. All right, Corey, they're coming in quick. I'm going to give it about five more seconds. All right. All right. So it looks like we have everyone represent, every grade level represented, but um, we are at 44% upper elementary, 28% admin other and early elementary, and 6% high school. Awesome. All right. So hopefully uh, there's something here for you um, that you can take away today, whether you are an early elementary uh, teacher or an admin um, that you can give to your teachers to really try to get your students to um, to experience the power of the outdoors and, and to be in nature. So for our kind of our schedule for today, we're going to really talk about why why nature matters, uh, why it's so important that we get our students outside. Um, and then I'm going to spend most of my time talking about how you can do it, just different ways that you can utilize the things around you, your local resources. Um, and then I do have some extra resources and tools that if I don't get to, they are all linked in the uh, HyperDoc. So hopefully there's something there for you to um, take advantage of as well. All right. So, you know, we're going to kind of start with you know, why nature is so important. And I know that um, most of you, if not all of you, have probably experienced this student. Um, we're located in Grand Rapids, Michigan, where four months out of the year, maybe five, um, the weather outside is, is very dreary, it's very cold. Um, and, you know, students are, during those months, can sometimes lack energy, right? Um, they're, they're not disruptive or anything like that. They're just kind of meh. I think, you know, teachers and, and adults also experience that during this time. Um, but then something happens, you know, that very first day of like slightly good weather, um, you know, it's sunny outside, it's, it's like in the mid 60s, all of a sudden that that student that really didn't have any energy that wasn't really doing a lot, 
they're they're bouncing off the walls, right? Um, and they have a lot of that pent up energy, and they have nowhere to go with it. Um, and a lot of times, the the choices that they make to uh, kind of spend that energy are maybe not the best for the classroom uh, and for everyone around them. And so, what we're hoping to share with you today is ways to uh, you know take this energy that that maybe you've experienced or you've seen your your students have um, and get it outside, but not in a way to just waste or to spend that energy, but in a way to still be able to teach the you know the standards and the content that we need to do. Um, and to really kind of get to this point where they're outside, students are outside, they're enjoying the, the outdoors, but they're they're really learning a lot about whatever content you have to teach. And so um, that's really our goal for, for this webinar is to find a way to take that energy and to get that, that energy into the great outdoors, but in a productive way um, for you to still be able to teach the things that you need to and for the, the students to enjoy themselves. Now, at the same time, uh, we are likely, there's probably no one in this webinar that has a school that is in the middle of a forest. Um, if you do, that is awesome and I'm very jealous, but um, there's, it's really not practical to say, oh, the minute that we step off our front steps of our, our uh, school, we're in the middle of wildlife. We have a bunch of trees around us and we have, um, you know, just all the great things that nature has to offer. It's right there on our doorstep. Again, that'd be a, a great thing for us to experience, but it's also probably not the the reality for for most teachers um and then you know you might be on the other end of the spectrum of this whole thing you might also be in a you know a big uh metropolitan city uh and your school is located right downtown and you're right next to a whole bunch of tall buildings and so nature sometimes when you're in a situation like this can be the farthest thing from our minds um when we step off the school grounds we are still in a kind of a concrete jungle if you will um, there's not a lot of, if any, green space and to, you know, think about taking our students somewhere to experience nature um, can be can be daunting. Now, hopefully you're, you know, somewhere in between of, of this, you know, these two uh, scenarios here. Um, but if not, you know, I, I want to make sure that I'm going to share ways to, you know, no matter which situation you're in or wherever your school is located, um, that you can take advantage of the outdoors. And then eventually get to something like this, whether it's in a downtown area or if you do have you know, a, a nature preserve really close nearby. Um, this is our goal that we want our students to, to get to when they're outside, um, where they're, they're having fun, they're being collaborative, and they're really um, they're experiencing the you know what nature has to offer in a in a product in a productive way. Uh, so I just briefly do want to share the the research that is, or some of the research that's been done on this, because there are some tangible benefits for uh, experiencing nature and getting our students outside. So when students are exposed to nature, and the the word exposed is used really loosely, which I think is a good thing. Um, you know, whether it's just free play outside, um, and or nature walks, or you know, maybe even just the views that your students experience from your classroom, if they have a you know, looking out the window and seeing a bunch of forestry and, and things like that, that can have some profound effects on our uh, student body. So um, students are reported to be able to concentrate better. They report being less stressed. Um, they're more engaged in the content that we're teaching. Um, and if you can get them, you know, fully outside, they are more physically active and and fit. Um, and then, you know, when we think about our learning outcomes too, this shows or the research shows that it increases our the academic achievement of our students. Um, they are able to perform at a higher level academically because of being outside. And um, not only that, though, it's also the personal development. So the development of the the, the kid as well is very important. Um, you know, being outside allows them to develop some, you know, better communication skills or leadership skills. They're more resilient. Um, and also that critical thinking and problem solving can get a lot better when they are able to experience nature. Um, and then also the stewardship piece. Um, having a stronger connection to nature and to the things around us is also a great benefit of being able to get our students to, um, to be outside. And so just to kind of kind of recap here, so, you know, it matters because we're enhancing engagement and curiosity of our students, which is which is fantastic. We're able to connect to real world context when we're talking about some of the science content that we have. We're not just reading it in a book. We can actually go outside and we can experience it. Um, the kids are able to develop scientific skills. 
that maybe they wouldn't be able to if you are even if you have a, like a nice laboratory that you're teaching science in um there are still things that nature offers us that we can't get if we you know we're not able to go outside um and then that en environmental awareness piece is super important as well um and as well as the health and the well-being of the individual that uh, of our student body so i have another quick poll here and i'm just curious to know of the five things that i just talked about which of those are the most important uh, to you when considering teaching through nature? Um, and I think they're all very important, but I'm just curious to see which one kind of resonates with, with our audience here. All right, Corey, I'm gonna give it about five or six more seconds as they keep coming in. All right. All right. So it looks like the leader at 38% is connecting to real world context, followed closely at 33% by enhancing engagement and curiosity. And then developing scientific skills and environmental awareness are both at 14%, and then 0% health and well being benefits. Okay, awesome. So, yeah, I think the you know, the goal of this uh, webinar here is to really look at some ways that we can do some of those things that are important to you, that we can enhance that engagement and curiosity, and we can connect to real world context um, and develop those, those scientific skills. So that's great. All right, so now we're gonna kind of focus or shift focus to how you can actually do it today. Um, and so we're gonna, I broke it down into kind of three different categories for us. Uh, so first we're gonna talk about incorporating nature into science lessons that maybe you already have created that already exists, but how can we make those, you know, take them to the next level with uh, getting our students outside. Um, but then I'm gonna talk about utilizing the outdoor environments around us or near us, um, because we there's a lot to offer, even though it might not always seem like that. Um, there really is a lot going on outdoors that we that we should and we can take advantage of. Um, and then I do wanna spend a little bit of time just talking about, well, what happens if we can't get outside? Um, how can we bring nature into the classroom to make it a little bit more powerful for the students to still get some of the benefits that, you know, being outside offers us. Um, and, you know, so I'm going to offer some or, or show some ideas on how we might be able to do that. So first, we're going to look at, you know, incorporating nature into our current science lessons, our current standards that we have. Um, how are, what are some easy ways, easy ways to do that? So we're, we're gonna start very basic first. Uh, when we think about getting outside, taking your students, whether it's on your you know, playground or going to a nature preserve, whatever it might be, um, just general observations and inquiry are very, very important. Um, and the, the reason why I like starting with this is because it's very open-ended and it's, it can be very broad, um, but it can lead to a lot of great conversations, a lot of great discussion with your students about the natural world around them. So when I take my students outside, I always encourage them. I, I mostly encourage them to use the four of their five senses. We don't really want them tasting anything, although I'm sure some of them have, um, depending on the age of the students. Uh, but really, you know, tapping into their senses and trying to uh, understand the world around us. So they can look at animal interactions. So the, the interactions between the animals, and that can be something as big as, you know, two squirrels interacting together, or, um, you know, maybe all the way down to an ant colony and how they communicate and how they, they function as a, as a colony. Looking at the life cycle of plants um, around your, your school grounds or a nature preserve can also be very powerful. Um, and also not only animals inter interacting with each other, but interacting with their environment. Um, so we do a, we, I teach a pollination lab, um, and it's really important for my students to understand how pollinators interact with different flowers. And so I can tell them how they interact with different flowers or different plants, but I'd rather go outside and I'd rather them look at the different uh, plants around them and see, you know, which pollinators are going where and, and how and experience it that way. Um, and then weather patterns as well. That's a big one, um, especially living in the Midwest. We, you know, our weather can change from hour to hour some days. And so um, having the students go outside, experience that in a safe way, of course, um, and can also be a powerful way to just really get their, their thinking started and really lead to some deeper discussions for the students. And so when I'm thinking about observations and inquiry for, for my students, I really like to I, I love these two little mini kind of lessons that I do with my students. So the first one is a nature color wheel. Um, so I give my students a color wheel like you see on the screen here. 
and we go to a local park and I, I let them know, okay, now you need to find items or objects around, not living or don't, you know, don't pick any living flowers or anything like that, but things on the ground that are uh, the same color as the different colors on the wheel. And so give them time to run around and, and find these things. Um, and, and it's really a great way for them to, you know, spend that energy, but also to understand critically uh, the things that they're finding. Well, why am I finding a lot of green things? Or why am I only finding, you know, brown things? And talking about the time of year, you could, you could talk about. Or maybe there's some colors they can't find, right? And so talk, you can even talk about biodiversity in that sense of, well, there are a lot of same colored things here. Why do you think that is? And that just, again, that starts the process for the students to really think about what is happening. Um, and then also life under a log. So just giving your students a blank sheet of paper and pencils or markers if you want to. Um, and then finding, if you have a nature trail nearby, walking that nature trail, finding a, a downed log uh, on the side of the trail, just lifting it up, not disturbing anything, but allowing the students to observe underneath it and to see that you know, that smaller ecosystem underneath the log inside of a larger ecosystem. These are very simple things, but they can be very powerful for, um, for the students. And then also uh, to, uh, thinking about hands-on activities. So I know, we all know that students learn better uh, with hands-on activities, right? Um, but how can you facilitate that? How can you do that in a, in a nature setting and in an effective way um so you know some examples would be taking uh, soil samples of different areas around your your uh your school um and understanding the soil makeup and how that can affect erosion or that can affect runoff um plant identification or animal identification is also a very popular one with students um there are a lot of apps out there that are very simple and easy to use and are they're free um, and your your students can, if you have uh, technology, you know, point it at a, an item, it'll tell them what it is, and they can start categorizing and kind of going through that process. Um, and even water analysis, um, water quality analysis. The water quality analysis is so important for students to understand that the health of the water can affect a lot of things. And so getting the students into the water um, is never a bad thing. Don't shy away from it. Um, you know, with the proper safety procedures, it's a great uh, tool, a great access for them to be able to understand that it really matters what uh, what is in our water and, and how it can affect the whole ecosystem. So I like I said, I like to have my students go in the water, they collect water samples themselves. Um, I can always bring the water samples to them, but again, getting the students outside, having them do it themselves is, is very important. Um, when it gets cooler in the fall, uh, I have a leaf chromatography lab that I do with students. So it's getting colder out, the leaves are turning colors. Well, what are the, the pigments in those different leaves? So I have the students go collect the leaves, and then we sometimes we can do the, um, the chromatography lab outside. Sometimes we can't, um, but they're still taking ownership and they're still, you know, they're still making um, observations and kind of going through that, that process. And then outdoor engineering design challenges very broad right we there are a lot of engineering different engineering design challenges but i like to put a different spin on it where the, the actual challenge can be whatever maybe whatever content you're covering but the the students are tasked with going out into nature and finding items to build and to complete that challenge again reminding students you know you don't want to pick live flowers or, or any living animals or things like that but things that are dead things that are on the ground you know, you pick those, um, collect them together, and then, you know, if you're building a, an animal or, or something like that, they can construct that based on the, the items that they, that they found. Um, and then also thinking about, you know, using nature to teach those science concepts. Um, we can always read it in a book, but being able to go outside and see it in person is, you know, is always a lot better. Um, so thinking about ecosystem dynamics, how things interact within an ecosystem, um, doing that is a great way to be able to, um, you know, bring your kids to an area where they can try to find different animals and try to construct a food web of the animals that live there. Um, thinking about weathering and climate, or weather and climate, right? Um, that is a great, you know, hot button topic to get outside to really look at those um, those different uh, things around them. Uh, thinking about erosion, if you're near like a sand dune or a beach, you can kind of take them there and you can see uh, the power of the wind and the water. There's a lot of different options here for, for your students. Um, and then also just something to, to touch on or that I want to touch on is just facilitating the outdoor experience because I know it can be maybe a little bit intimidating, 
uh, you're going to take your you know, 30 plus kids sometimes to an area that is a lot larger than your classroom. How do you make sure that everyone is staying safe? How do you make sure that you know, everyone is doing what they need to do? Um, and one thing I like to do is just talk with the students, obviously, before we go out about expectations. But I also like to remind them that I'm obviously very worried about their safety, not worried about their safety, but I want to make sure they're safe. But I also want to make sure that they are being respectful of their environment that is around them. So talking about the stewardship piece, we don't want to trample, you know, living things. We don't want to pick things that are living or pick animals from their, their uh, native home. So being respectful, right? Um, and also, I, I have uh, science toolkits that I that the kids take outside with them. So there has magnifying glasses in there. Um, you know, if I'm doing water quality testing, I'll have some some of that material in there. Um, and just having a science kit for the kids to use also helps to direct their their behavior and and really keep them focused on what they're supposed to be doing. I also like to make a bird call. Um, I, not me personally, I'm not a good bird caller, but on my phone, you know, you can find the, the sound of maybe a local bird um, and you can play it on your phone really loud. So when the students hear that, wherever they're at in the area you are, they know to stop what they're doing and, and look for you, right? Um, and bonus points if you get it, you know, if you relate it more to the content that you're doing, but that's just a good way to gather the attention of your students. Um, and then also I like to have group leaders. So breaking those students up into different groups of you know, three to four um, and maybe finding those stronger individuals that are, that are maybe a little bit better at leadership um, and letting them kind of lead their group to make sure they're staying on task and doing things. It makes your job a lot easier um, and they, they also enjoy that as well. Um, and then being flexible with what happens. What happens outside is a little bit different than what you don't have a lot of or as much control as you do in the classroom, right? So being flexible is key to make sure that the, the experience is great for everyone. So next I wanna talk about utilizing the outdoor environments. Um, so this is really meant to think about the resources around you. Um, it doesn't have to be a really, like that first example I show you of a really a forest, right? There are a lot of opportunities near you that I'm sure you're aware of, of some of them, but maybe you're not aware of all the opportunities that you might have for your students. So um, one thing to just think about is it, the playground is, an outdoor area. It, uh, it is a great place for your students to go outside and to experience nature. Now, depending on how the makeup of your playground, um, you might have to find, you know, a certain, a little smaller area on the playground, but it's still, your students are still going to be able to get those benefits of being outdoors just by going on the, on the uh, playground. Think about local botanical gardens. Um, if there's even a nature trail or just a walking trail, it doesn't have to be a nature trail, a walking trail along the river. Your students can walk that that trail, um, and they can do those kind of those hands-on activities or those those basic observations to make that powerful for them. Um, and also, if you have the means to do it, you know, doing an outdoor classroom design can be super powerful. And the thing I like about this is it can be as simple as you want it, or it can be as um, detailed as you want it. So having your students. Um, just kind of have a dedicated area to sit, you know, you have a simple whiteboard, or maybe you want to, if you have the funds to build a, you know, a more detailed outdoor setting, um, and then take your students out there when you can, right? Getting your students outside whenever we can is always going to have great benefit. Um, and then thinking about just where you're located, uh, the time of year, the content, obviously, that you're teaching, but really focusing on those uh, nature cycles. And one of the great things is if you have your students from the beginning of the year in September all the way to June, um, you know, if you can, like try to do an investigation that requires them to visit a location, but then come back later. Um, so thinking about things like the uh, weather patterns, right? Uh, you can have them look at the different temperatures on, on different days and how it fluctuates throughout the year. You could do a, a plant life cycle for if you have the full year. Um, starting it from a seed and you know tracking that progress and also you can look at uh, animal uh, migration patterns that is also a really great thing um, the students can start to count a specific type of animal and you know depending on the animal not all animals migrate obviously but some do and so they can look at those migration patterns and when those those animals leave and when they come back it can also be a, a great way for your students to experience the outdoor environment now I want to talk about you know what happens if you can't get outside, um, and it's not the end of the world, right? We can still bring nature into our classroom and still have some of those great um, effects that that nature can have. So um, really looking at creating an indoor nature center, um, and so this can be this is very broad. This can be whatever you want it to be with your students. You you can theme it 
to whatever content you are you are teaching with your students. Um, I really like having the students bring things in uh, for this, so they're kind of building the nature center uh, along with you, and you're kind of collecting things, and that's making um, you know more ownership for the students. But even if you can't do a nature center, just having any living plants or any terrarium type um, object in your class can be powerful. If you don't have you know, a lot of natural light in your, your classroom, um, so your, your students can't see outside, bringing that greenery in is also going to be beneficial for those students. Um, and then, you know, something that was made popular during our, you know, the pandemic, virtual nature experiences, they still have a lot to offer. And the one thing I like about them is that they're still, they're showing things that even if your students can go outside, they might not be able to experience. So they might not be able to see a bald eagle when you guys walk outside, but, they might be able to watch this, um, you know, this webcam here, and then they can experience the um, behavior patterns of a bald eagle. And so I've linked a few of these in the resource doc, but there are there are just a ton of those out there um, that you can find with just a little searching. So I'm just curious uh, of the main ideas that I just talked about, which one kind of resonates the most with you as far as um, you know? Do you want more uh, looking at incorporating nature into science, or do you want to like the utilizing of your outdoor spaces around you? Or is it maybe bringing nature into your classroom just with where you're at and you know what you have to teach? All right, Corey, we're in about five more seconds here. All right. All right. Well, it looks like all of these ideas are going to be used with students, so that's awesome. Um, the leader at 61% is utilizing outdoor environments, okay. followed by 48% incorporating nature into science lessons, and 22% bringing nature into the classroom. Awesome. That's great. So hopefully, like I said, hopefully you heard something here that uh, you want to try with your students or you think is a great idea to, uh, you know, utilize the, the resources around you. Um, but hopefully, yeah, hopefully you got something from that. Um, and I do want to quickly talk about some additional resources and tools. These are all and more linked in the HyperDoc uh, that you have. Uh, but field guides are also a powerful thing for using with your students. Um, I like, you know, using ones that are already made, but I also like having my students create their own field guides. So if they want to learn about a certain topic, um, they need to find the information about it, create their own field guide, and then they can share that with, you know, others around them. Citizen science is a very popular one. There are a lot of projects that your, uh, that your students can do, and it's helping other scientists from around the world. Um, and then the National Park Service has a lot of resources for outdoor learning um, that you can hopefully take advantage of. Um, as does Project Learning Tree, they're both they're very focused on outdoor learning. Um, and so those are definitely resources or sites that I would encourage you to look at. And then also though, don't forget about your local collaborative partnerships, uh, your local zoo, your local uh, you know, botanical garden, whatever it might be, because they probably have some type of research that maybe they're conducting that maybe they want some help with and they have some ideas on how to get outside in na into nature. Um, and so that is really an awesome opportunity for you to hopefully take advantage of as well. And I just wanna kind of end on this. So uh, this is a quote from John Lubbock who is an English bus businessman and he said, earth and sky, woods and fields, lakes and rivers, the mountain and the sea are excellent schoolmasters and teach some of us more than we can ever learn from books, right? So if you can do it, it's much better than reading it. Reading, you know, books are great. Um, they have their place, but if you can get outside, you know, nature has so much to teach us and getting our students into that nature um, is, is a great thing for us to, to strive to do. So if you like what you heard here today, um, you know, tell your administrator, we do uh, flex professional development. So if there are things that you and your school and your teachers need, we would love to be able to uh, provide that for, for your school. Um, so if you wanna learn more, you can go to vaei.org slash flex dash PD. Um, and uh, join us next time, next month, we have another webinar, it's called Next Gen Learning, Five Ed Tech Tools to Engage and Inspire. It's on Wednesday, May 15th at 4 p.m. Uh, and just a quick reminder about our sponsor, Science on the Grand. So if you do want to uh, join us for this awesome conference, you can save 20% uh, on your registration by using the code uh, THANK-U.
And then last but not least, uh, I do want to mention we do have, uh, and I do uh, link this in the hyperdoc, we have Blue Apple projects, which are um, project or PBL units that you can use with your students. Um, some of them they are, you can use and, and you can use for uh, teaching outdoors. Um, so it engages students, it teaches content, and it makes the world a better place. Um, so there's a lot of options there. You can go to blueappleteacher.org for this um, to see all the different projects that we have available. But if you take our quick survey after the webinar ends, um, you'll be entered to win one free Blue Apple project as well um, of your choice. I'll reach out to you if you're the winner. Um, so if you would, we would really appreciate it for you to take that survey. And then, um, like I said, one of you will win a free Blue Apple project. All right. And I do want to thank all of you for joining, taking time out of your busy schedules to join here today. I hope it was worth your while. I hope you got something um, that you want to maybe try with your students. And I would love for you to stay in touch. Uh, my email there is right at the bottom. And I'd love to hear from you. If you have any more questions or anything about what was talked about today, uh, I'd love to connect. So thank you guys so much. And I hope you have a great rest of your school year. Yeah.